Hello to everyone. Welcome to the course on numerical linear algebra and application. Today we are going to have 30. Let us quickly recall what we did in the previous lecture. In the previous lecture, previous lecture. In the previous lecture, we have computed few examples pertaining to singular value decomposition. Today, we are going to do some more examples in pertaining to singular value decomposition, Koleskai factorization, dominant eigenvalues and so on and so forth. First of all, let us do this example Koleskai decomposition of the matrix. All of you knowing very well, Koleskai decomposition plays a vital role in many engineering applications. For instance, image processing, computer aided tomography, noise removal, and medical applications, so on and so forth. For the sake of brevity, let us confine ourselves to a simple matrix of order 3 by 3. Also, whatever competition we make it over here, we will restrict ourselves to 4 decimal places. I have been given a matrix 3 over 3, that is, first row is 6, 15, 55, second row is 15, 55, 225, third row is 55, 225, 979. We have to find H such that A is equal to H times of H transpose where H is given by H11 0 0 H21 H22 0 H31 H32 H33 by the algorithm we have H11 is equal to square root of A11 which will be equivalent to square root of 6 as we see A11 is 6. So that turns out to be 2.4495 and H21 is a21 upon H11, so which will be equal to 15 upon 2.4495, so that turns out to be 6.1237. H22 will be equal to square root of A22 minus H square 21. So, which would be 55 minus 6.1237 square. So, which turns out to be 4.1833. And H31 is A31 upon H11, which will be 22.4537. And H32 is equal to A32 minus H31 times of H21 divided by H22. So that turns out to be 225 minus 22.4537, 6.1237 divided by 4.1833. So essentially you do get as 225 minus 137.5 divided by 
4.1833 which turns out to be 20.9165 and H33 will be equal to square root of A33 minus H square 31 minus H square 32. So which turns out to be square root of 979 minus 22.4537 square minus 20.9165 square. So which turns out to be 6.1101. So you will have capital H is equal to H11 00 H21 H22 0 H31 H32 H33 so which turns out to be 2.4495 0 0 6.1237 4.1833 0 22.4537 and we can also verify this h times of h transpose will be equal to 2.4495 0 0 6.1237 4.1833 22 22.4537, 20.9165, 6.1101. Multiplied with 2.4495, 6.1237, 22 22.4537. And second row is 0, 4.1833, 20.9165. 3rd row is 0, 0, 6.1101. So when you multiply these two matrices H into H transpose which turns out to be 6, 15, 55, 15, 55, 225, 55, 225, 979 so which is the matrix a find the more a penrose pseudo inverse of the matrix correct to four decimal places that is matrix a will be equivalent to 1 minus 2 3 5 8 minus 1 2 1 1 minus 1, 4, minus 3. So, pseudo inverse of a matrix A is, you can write it as, A transpose A, whole inverse, times of A transpose. So, we can find out the matrix pseudo inverse as, A transpose A, whole inverse, A transpose. To find A transpose, we will write this matrix as 1 minus 2, 3, 5, 8 minus 1, 2, 1, 1, minus 1, 4, minus 3. So when you transpose it, 1 minus 2, 3, 5, 8 minus 1, 2, 1, minus 2, 1 plus 1, minus 1, 4, minus 3. Now let us multiply with A transpose A. So this will be the matrix A that is 1, 5, 2, minus 1, minus 2, 8, 1, 4, 3, minus 1, 1, minus 3. Multiplied with 1, 5, 2, minus 1, minus 2, 8, 1, 4, 3, minus 1, 1, minus 3. So when you multiply these two matrices, you will end up with a matrix like this. That is 31, 6, 3, 36, 85, 25, 3, minus 25, 20. So this matrix is the A transpose A. 
now let us find the inverse matrix that is a transpose a whole inverse that will be equivalent to 31 36 3 36 85 minus 25 3 minus 25 20 so you will have 3 by 3 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 so when you do r1 that is 1 by 31 times of r1 which is 1 36 by 31 3 by 31 1 over 31 rest are all zeros 36 85 minus 25 0 1 0 this is 3 minus 25 20 0 0 1 so when you simplify this you do get as r2 minus 36 r1 that is 1 36 by 31 3 by 31 this is 0 this is fine and this is fine this is my 3 this is minus 25 this 20 and this matrix turns out to be this 1 over 31 0 0 minus 36 by 31 1 0 0 0 1 so when you apply this matrix this r3 minus 3 r1 it turns out to be 1 36 by 31 3 by 31 0 1 3 3 9 by 31 minus 8 8 3 upon 31 0 minus 8 8 3 upon 31 6 1 1 upon 31 so it turns out to be 1 over 31 0 0 minus 36 by 31 1 0 minus 3 by 31 0 1 so when you do this r2 that will be equal to 31 by 1339 times of r2 1 36 by 31 3 by 31 0 1 minus 883 upon 1339 0 minus 883 upon 31 611 upon 31 so this is the matrix so when you apply this matrix that is r1 r1 minus 36 by 31 r2 and r3 would be replaced as r3 plus 883 upon 31 times of r2 so we will end up with a matrix like this 1 0 0 1 0 0 so this is 35805 by 41509 2635 upon 41 509 36 upon 1339 0 this is 0 1 this is the fraction minus 883 upon 1339 minus 36 upon 1339 31 upon 1339 0 and this is 0 0 38 times of 440 upon 41509 minus 35805 upon 41509 1339 883 so this is a 1 so when you apply this matrix to r3 that is 41509 upon 38440 times of r3 so which turns out to be of this matrix of this form if you look at this matrix it is 1 0 0 1 and these are all very small values this is also small value right and again you apply this factor you end up with 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 so this is 0.8669 minus of 0.6411 minus of 0.9314 this is minus of 0 0.6411 0 0.4927 0 0.7121 and this is minus of 0 0.9314 0 0.7121 1.0798 and this one will become a transpose a whole inverse which is 0 0.8669 minus of 0 0.6411 minus of 0 0.9314 this will be minus of 0 0.6411 0 0.4927 0 0.7124 and this will be minus of 0 0.9314 0 0.7121 1.0798 
now it becomes a matrix like this a transpose a whole inverse times of a transpose so this will become 0.8669 this is the first row this is the second row this is the third row multiplied with the first column second column third column so we will end up with the matrix of like this 0.6451 so therefore we can have the pseudo inverse in this following way that is a plus is equal to 0 0.6451 and this is the second element and this is the third element and this is the fourth element similarly this is the first element this is the second element this is the third element this is the fourth element similarly this is the first element this is the second element, this is the third element and this is the fourth element. So you will have all together three rows, four columns. So now let us look at into the some more examples pertaining to the dominant eigenvalues. We have already seen that dominant eigenvalues of a matrix play a vital role and we have computed by using what we call power method. So let us see few more examples, theory already we did it. How power method can be useful in order to find out dominant eigenvalues and corresponding eigenvectors. So we are given a 2 by 2 matrix. Same thing can be extended to the higher order matrix. But for the sake of brevity, we confine ourselves to 2 by 2 matrix. Let us start with an arbitrary vector x0 that is 1 comma 1. So iteration 1 is x1 that is ax0 which will be matrix A and x0 is this. So 2 1 2, 3 1 3, 5, 4 1 4, 10 1 10, so 14. By scaling we obtain the approximation, so this is the bigger value. So x1 is equal to 1 over 14 times of 5 comma 14, so which is 0.3571 and this is 1 and iteration 2 is x2 hat which is a x1 so a is the matrix 2 3 4 10 and x1 is the matrix so when you multiply it with this you get as 3.7143 11.4286 by scaling we get it as x2 is equal to 1 over 11.4286 multiplied with 3.7143 11.4286 so essentially it turns out to be this matrix 0 0.3251 1 so iteration 3 is x3 cap will be equal to a x3 so that will be equal to 2 3 4 10 and x3 is 0 0.3251 so you get it as 3.252 so it turns out to be plus 3 so 3.65 correct so this is 1.2 plus 10 11.3 something like that so by scaling this 11.3 so you do get the matrix as 0 0.323 and 1 that is for the iteration 3. So when you go for iteration 4, further it should improve it. x4 is ax3, that is the matrix A and x3 is this matrix. So we will get as 0 0.6460 multiplied plus 3, so 3.6460. And second one is 1.2 plus 10, 11.2920. Similarly, when you go for this scaling, we could do get x4 is equal to 1 over 11.2920 multiplied with this matrix. 
3.6460 upon 11.2920. So therefore essentially it will become 3.6460 upon 11.2920. So it is almost close to that is 3.6 upon 11. So 0 0.3229. Similarly here 11.2920 upon 11.2920 so which turns out to be 1. So therefore we can tell that the dominant eigen value is 11.2920 and the corresponding dominant eigen vector is 0 0.3229 comma 1. 0.3229,1. So that is corresponding to x4. So let us see one more example how actually dominant eigenvalue of the matrix can be used by using power method. Slightly different elements we will take it here negative values a is equal to 8 minus 6 2 and minus 6 7 minus 4 2 minus 4 3. So let us start with arbitrary vector. So it is not necessarily that you should start with 1 1 1. You can start with any initial vector but 1 1 1 is a standard a standard one which can be used for retaining the eigenvalues for normalization. So let us look at into the first iteration. So when you talk about the first iteration x1 cap which is a x0. So a is the matrix you will have it 8 minus 6 2 minus 6 7 minus 4. 2 minus 4 3 multiplied with x naught that is whatever we assumed 1 1 1 it should be put up over here and when you do this iteration you will end up a matrix called 4 minus 3 1 this is the matrix and by scaling we obtain the approximation x4 as this is the matrix this by scaling the matrix x1 can be written as x1 is equal to 1 by 4 times of minus 1 by 4 times of 4 minus 3 1 and in turn it turns out to be a 3 rows 1 column that is 1 minus of 0 0.75 0 0.25. So when you go to the step 2 x2 hat is equal to a x1 a is a matrix of 3 by 3 and x1 is just previously obtained you do get a matrix called x2 cap that is 13 minus of 12.25 5.75. By scaling we obtain, this is the maximum element, so 13, 13 minus 12.25, 5.75, a, which is essentially turns out to be 1, 0 0.9423, 0 0.4423. So when you go to the iteration 3, it turns out to be x3 cap, which is equal to ax2, a is the matrix, that is the coefficient matrix which we have simplified, multiplied with x2. So it turns out to be matrix of this form, third rows. 3 rows, 1 column. So that is 14.5385 minus of 14.3654 minus of point, my, point, 7 point nine, zero, nine, six, two. 7 point zero, nine, six, two. So therefore by scaling we get this matrix X3 is as 1 over 14.5385 times of this matrix. That is 14.5385 minus 11.3654 7.0962 so which turns out to be 1 minus of 0 0.9881 0 0.4881 and in continuation to that if you use iteration 4 you get x4 cap that is ax3 which can be written as this is the coefficient matrix and this is the vector so essentially it turns out to be this matrix 14.9048 minus 14.8690 7.4167. So scaling we do get this matrix. X of 4 will be equivalent to. So bigger value absolute value is this. 14.9048 times of X1 and X2. So which turns out to be minus of 14.8690 2.1679. So it essentially turns out to be matrix X4 which is minus of 0 0.9976, 0 0.4976. So keep on continuing like this so you get a convergence. Let us look at it one more step in iteration method X5 hat that is AX4. So we will have a 3 by 3 matrix that is 3 rows 3 by 1 matrix. So when multiply with you get it as 
this that is single row third order matrix so by scaling we get this matrix x5 is equal to 1 over 14.9808 and this is the matrix so when you do this calculation so we will end up this matrix 1 comma 0 0.09985 1 comma 0.99895.4995 so similarly when you do carry out the iteration 6 x6 is equal to ax5 so this is a matrix you will have it multiplied with ax3 so you will get this matrix of the form 14.9962 minus 7.14.9947 7.4965 6 others. So by scaling the maximum value is this you do get as 14 minus 14.5 So the value which you get finally is 1 minus of 0.9999 plus 4.999 by using the scaling after 6 steps. So therefore we have the couple we have the dominant eigenvalue lambda is the 14.9962 and corresponding eigenvector is minus 1 comma minus of 0.9999, 4.999 as we see in the previous case. So the beauty of the power method is, once you calculate it, keep on calculating the iterations, you get the corresponding coefficient as eigenvalue and the corresponding vector as the eigenvector. So today what we learned is, we learned how actually some of the examples can be done by using the power method, how dominant eigenvalue can be computed how actually the, the basics are involved in order to try to find out the, the floating point arithmetic in relation to the just uh, concluded previous theorems in the last class what we did it. So I am sure that these examples will help us in order to obtain better results and for learning you can practice these examples. So thank you very much. Thank you.